Well, we'll go ahead and start the meeting. Good evening and welcome to our virtual Committee of Adjustment meeting. On your screen, you'll see members of the Committee of Adjustment. Now, behind the scenes, we have many staff members with us this evening, and even though you won't see them, you will hear them chime in from time to time. Our Secretary Treasurer is Lindsay Stamen, and our Clerk is Elizabeth Fawcett, and they'll be hosting the meeting and running the Zoom platform from behind the scenes. Now, the agenda and the schedules for this meeting have been posted on Dash on the city's website. And if you don't have those documents and you'd like to follow along, you might want to access them now. So we have 10 agenda items uh, for this evening, and I'd like to share with you the format that I'll be using to navigate through each application. I'm going to start by introducing an applicant, and I'll give the applicant or their agent an opportunity to add anything further. If you are the applicant or the agent, and you have nothing further to add, then just simply say so. Next, I'll invite members of the committee to ask questions of either the applicant or staff, and then I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Now, it's at that time I'm going to invite members of the public to raise their virtual hand in Zoom if they have any questions or comments in respect of the application. If you do have a question or if you wish to make a comment, please don't expect an immediate answer. It's during this public portion of the meeting that we will be recording your questions and comments, and only after I close the public portion of the meeting will the questions and comments be addressed by the applicant, their agent, or staff. Next, I'll invite the applicant or staff to address those public comments, after which I'll turn back to the committee, I'll ask them to make a motion, and then we can deliberate on the application. So at that time, if you're the applicant, you're free to leave the meeting. Now, I'm going to be using the same format for each application this evening. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, if you do have a personal interest in any particular application and you'd like to receive written notice of tonight's decision, then please send an email with your name and address to our Secretary Treasurer, Lindsay Stamen. Her email address is lsthamann at cityofkingston.ca. So now I'll call the meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. And committee members, can I please call for a motion to approve the agenda? So moved by Paul and seconded by Vincent. And all in favor, raise your hands. And that's unanimously carried. Okay, uh, now we're on to confirmation of the minutes. So can I have somebody move that the uh, minutes of the meeting from March 22nd uh, be approved? They so moved by Jordan and seconded by Paul. Any discussion on those? Okay, so all in favor, raise your hand. And that would be carried. Okay, so this evening, are there any disclosures of pecuniary interest by committee members? And uh, Somnath, I see your hand raised. Oh, your mic is muted, Somnath. Sorry, uh, the property on 60 Kenwoods, I know a bunch of people in that neighborhood, so I would like to step out of the room for that one. That's not a problem, okay. Okay, any other disclosures of pecuniary interest? I see none. Okay, thanks very much for that. We have no delegations this evening and there are no requests for deferral, um, nor are there any returning deferred items. So our first piece of new business that we have is actually um, number 8A, which is an application for minor variance. Uh, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, our first application tonight is for a minor variance at 149 Ordnance Street. The file number associated with the application is D13005-2021. Chris Wicca is the city planner on this file, and I'll turn it over to him now for a brief presentation. Great, thanks. Uh, thank you. So uh, this is an application for a minor variance and the purpose and effect of the uh, application is to permit relief from the requirements for the projections into yards, uh, the minimum front yard setback and the maximum height for a flat roof uh, to permit uh, two separate parts of a, a renovation project, a third floor addition and a covered porch. Can I have the next slide please? Thank you. The, so the, uh, the property in question is located on the north side of Ordnance Street, just to the east of McBurney Park. Next slide, please. 
the three variances in question, as mentioned, are the projections into yards, which relates to uh, an existing entrance where the, there's a proposed covered porch to be, uh, to be built. Uh, and uh, the minimum front yard, which relates to the third floor addition, uh, it's relief basically on the, up in the third floor, and the maximum building height, which uh, is in regard to the design of the uh, specific, um, the specific design of the addition proposed. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the, uh, you can see in red, the footprint of the house in question. Uh, I'd like to just uh, note for you that there is an encroachment which is permitted currently by the city at the front of the house that's existing. And so currently the, uh, the applicant is not proposing any change to the footprint of the, of the home for either the covered porch uh, proposed feature or the third floor addition. So this is the front and west, the, the southern uh, elevations here on the, uh, on the left and the, and the west elevation is uh, on your right hand side there. So as you can see, uh, the, um, the, the relief for the uh, height of the flat roof is for the, uh, the element at the top. They're proposing to raise slightly the existing um, height of the building, uh, but there is not going to be uh, any requirement for relief from the overall height. Uh, of the building. It's just for the fact that it's a flat roof. Uh, and again, um, you can see that the, in the, in the right-hand side, it gives you a better view of both the covered porch element on the front, as well you can see that the third floor element that's proposed uh, is not actually going to be um, directly over the front wall of the house, but will be set back as well from the front wall. But they're still requesting relief in order to accommodate um, the, the minimum front yard. Next slide, please. So you can see here the, uh, the other elevations, the, the rear elevation is on the right-hand side and the east elevation of the home is on the uh, left-hand side. Next slide, please. This is a floor plan. What's being proposed for the third floor is an additional bedroom and a bathroom and living space. There's no change intended for the single detached uh, dwelling uh, from a use perspective. Uh, we did require, we did receive one query, uh, and uh, uh, since the creation of this presentation, actually, there was a, a comment received, and it was in support of the application, and I believe that members of uh, committee have received that as an addendum. So ultimately, the recommendation is that the, uh, the requested variance is uh, be uh, are the recommended for approval subject to the proposed conditions, which are also part of the uh, uh, the exhibits provided. And the intent here is that the uh, the approval of the application is going to permit the construction of the third floor addition and uh, the the covered porch for weather protection. And again, this is all uh, over an existing building footprint. Great, thanks very much. Uh, thanks very much, Chris. Okay, I'd now like to call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Yep, uh, Sean Thompson, 149 Oregon Street. Okay, and uh, thanks very much for being here. Is there anything further you want to add to the application we have before us? Uh, no, nothing, nothing further. I think uh, Chris did a good job presenting it and it's uh, fairly yeah, clear in the application. Oh, thank Very you. good. Okay. So now I'd like to uh, call on committee members. Uh, committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or for staff? Please raise your virtual hand or please raise your hand. And I don't see any questions from any committee members. Okay. So I'll open up the public portion of the meeting. Are any members of the public here this evening to speak to the application for 149 Ordnance Street? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And I'm not seeing any, so are any members of the public with us this evening who wish to speak to the application for 149 Ordnance Street, please raise your virtual hand. And I'll call one third and final time, are any members of the public here this evening to speak to the application for 149 Ordnance Street, please raise your hand. And I'm not seeing any, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting and I'll come back to the committee uh, for a motion. Okay, so moved by Vincent, seconded by Paul. Any discussion? No, no discussion. So all in favor, raise your hand. And that would be unanimously carried. Yep, thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so our next agenda item is number 8B for 60 Kenwood's Circle. Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, this is an application for minor variance, file number D13003-2021 at 60 Kenwood Circle. Golsa Kir Muhadam will give a brief presentation on behalf of the city. Great, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, this application is for 60 Kenwood Circle. Um, uh, the file number is D13003-2021. Uh, next slide, please. The applicant has uh, constructed a new in-ground swimming pool and a pool shed and is proposing a pergola in the rear yard. Variance from zoning bylaw number 3274 is required to reduce minimum setback from floodplain for the subject development. Um, three variances has been requested and um, one is for uh, the swimming pool, which uh, the variance requested is 8.3 meters. Uh, for the pool shed, the variance requested is five meter. And for the pergola, the variance requested is four meters. Next slide, please. Uh, in 1998, a minor variance application was approved by the Committee of Adjustment to permit a setback of 10 meters from the floodplain to accommodate a swimming pool and an accessory pool shed on the subject property. The construction of the new swimming pool, a pool shed, and a pergola involved the removal of the existing swimming pool and accessory structure. Next slide, please. Um, the property is currently developed with a two-story single detached dwelling, an in-ground swimming pool, and a detached accessory structure used as a pool shed. The subject property is located on the west side of uh, Kenwood Circle, uh, and about Cataract River to the west and single detached dwelling houses to the north, east and south, many of which have uh, in-ground swimming pools and accessory structures. Next slide, please. Uh, the applicant has constructed a new in-ground swimming pool, a pool shed, and is proposing a pergola, as you can see, see on the site plan drawing, um, uh, a new 1.8 meter wood fence, um, is proposed to be erected around, along the north, south, and uh, west property lines. A new deck is proposed within the existing deck footprint at the rear of the house, and an existing retaining wall is proposed to be further built up. Next slide, please. Uh, the subject property is designated residential and environmental protection area. The primary use of the property is single family dwelling, which is proposed to remain unchanged. Uses within EPA are limited to open space uh, conservation and flood protection uh, and must be approved in consultation with the Cataraki Region Conservation Authority. This application has been reviewed by CRCA and the applicant has been informed about the required permit. Next slide, please. The new pool is located closer to the water than the original uh, pool. However, the new pool remains behind the existing retaining wall at the shoreline. Um, the applicant has submitted a grading plan which identifies the proposed grading of the site. The existing retaining wall is proposed to be increased in height to prevent runoff uh, to the Cataract River. Um, However, engineering services has requested a revised grading plan to further ensure that their drainage will be prevented from flowing onto adjacent properties. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the subject property is not on the city's heritage register. However, it is adjacent to a portion of the Rideau Canal World, Her World Heritage Site. Uh, Reorientation of the pool should have no further impact on the heritage value of the WHS. Therefore, a heritage impact statement is not required. Um, next slide, please. The swimming pool and accessory structures in the rear yard of the property are in keeping with the waterfront nature of the surrounding residential development, as several properties contain swimming pool and accessory structures in this area. The site layout provides uh, for adequate and desirable amenity and landscaped area. Next slide, please. 
The property is zoned residential type one and flat plain uh, in the zoning bylaw number 3274. Uh, as per section 522, no building or structure other than a marine facility or marina shall be located less than 15 meters from a flat plain. Zoning bylaw defines flat plain as the area below the high water mark of a water body. The proposed variances meet the intent of the zoning bylaw and flat plain setbacks to prevent natural hazard associated natural hazards associated with the Cataraki River. The development meets all other provisions of, of FP-1 and R1-25 zones. Next slide, please. Um, as per CRCA review, the new pool remains outside uh, the hazard and well above the flood plain, allowing for adequate protection from damage during flood, flood events. Um, access for safe ingress and egress is primarily intended for buildings and structures and is not a concern in this circumstance. The new development is outside the erosion hazard limit and um, given the amount of previous disturbance at the site and the fact that new development does not encroach closer than the existing retaining wall near the water, it is not anticipated to impose negative impacts uh, to the provincially significant wetlands. Next slide, please. The variances are appropriate and desirable development as it will allow the renovation of the amenities of the rear yard and is consistent with the nature of the waterfront development in the area. The variances are minor in nature as the pro proposed reduction of minimum setback from flood plain is considered a minor change to the existing development. And to date, uh, no written or oral, oral submissions have been received relating to this application. Um, therefore, the ap approval of the subject application is recommended to the Committee of Adjustment subject to the conditions outlined in the report. Thank you. Great, thanks Golsa. Um, at this point, can I call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please? Good evening, Mr. Chair. My name is Mike Keen, and I'm a land use planner with FOTEN Consultants. And our office is uh, located in the Woolen Mill uh, for Cataraqui Street. And I'm here on behalf of the owner. And I, I don't have anything to add to uh, Golsa's presentation tonight. It was very clear. Uh, I will remain in the audience should committee or uh, or any members of the public have questions that require my assistance. Thank you. Very good, thanks for that. Okay, so I'll now uh, turn it over to the committee. Um, do you have any questions of the applicant or their agent? I see none, nobody's uh, jumping the gun here. Okay, so I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Are there any members of the public here to speak to the application for 60 Kenwood's Circle? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. So are any members of the public here this evening to speak to the application for 60 Kenwood Circle? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. I'm not seeing any, so I'll ask one more time. Are any members of the public here uh, to speak to the application for 60 Kenwood Circle? Please raise your virtual hand. And I'm not seeing any, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting and we'll come back to the committee for a motion. So moved by Vincent, seconded by Greg. Uh, any discussion? None? Okay, so all in favor, raise your hand. And that's unanimously carried with um, uh, one pecuniary interest. Thanks very much. Okay, we'll go to our next application, which is uh, 8C, which is an application for permission. Uh, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair. This is an application for permission at 292 Dalton Avenue. The file number is D13011-2021. And Tim Fisher is the planner assigned to this application. Great, thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so we have uh, an application. Uh, the address is 292 Dalton Avenue. The application type is for permission. Uh, file number D13011. 
2021. The purpose and effect of the application, the uh, applicant is proposing to further define the industrial uses, uh, which are defined in the industrial M zone uh, to include a truck and trailer training center. Uh, a truck or uh, freight terminal is currently permitted within the M zone in zoning by law number 8499. Next slide. The subject property is actually on the south side of Dalton Avenue and uh, is actually located at the end of the bulb at uh, Cattail Place. Uh, the property just to the north is, um, um, oh, I forget what it is now, sorry. Uh, uh, I think they're called Happy, anyways. Uh, there's the motorcycle um, sales place right across the street. Uh, and friendly fires uh, across the street as well, too. Uh, to the uh, east is a door and window manufacturing. Uh, and actually to the south, uh, we have a uh, truck repair facility, which is at five uh, Cactail Place. And at four Cactail Place is actually a, um, uh, a construction uh, a depot. Next slide there, please. So a request for permission is a little different than a minor variance. This is actually under section 45.2B of the Planning Act, uh, which states that in addition, uh, in addition to the powers of the Committee of Adjustment under section 45.1, the committee upon any such application where the use of the land, building or structure permitted in the bylaw are defined in general terms, may permit a use of any land building or structure for any purpose that in the opinion of the committee conforms with the uses permitted in the bylaw. So in this, so to summarize it, the committee has uh, the authority to uh, permit a use which is similar to the existing uses that are currently in uh, the bylaw. So uh, if it's silent on a certain type of use or it's very similar, uh, but it's not overly defined in the bylaw, the committee has a right to uh, permit that use if it's very similar to the existing uses that uh, are already permitted. Next slide. Uh, so the site plan here, uh, the owner is uh, looking at constructing the uh, training facility, which is the building uh, to the center. Um, and as you can see, uh, they have truck uh, parking and uh, employee and uh, I guess client parking there as well too. Uh, they will have access on Dalton Avenue and also on uh, Cactail Place as well too. Next slide. Uh, they have provided four plans, uh, which you can see. Uh, these plans may change, uh, obviously at the building permit stage. However, for now we're looking at some training centers, uh, the warehouses, uh, the classroom uh, places and uh, washroom facilities as well too. Next slide. So at this time, there's no written uh, comments or objections received from the public prior to tonight's meeting regarding the proposal. There was one uh, general comment from the abutting landowner uh, to the east, which is the door and window manufacturer. Uh, they just had a general question in regards to civic addressing. Uh, but that uh, issue was, was dealt with. It wasn't an issue with the, uh, the proposal. Next slide. So our recommendation here is that the application permission uh, file number D13011-2021 for the property located at uh, 292 Dalton Avenue uh, to further define the industrial uses in the industrial zone, M zone, uh, to include the truck and trailer training center be approved subject to our recommendations in exhibit A, uh, in the planner's report, as the uh, training facility is, uh, uh, we feel accessory to uh, a, uh, a trucking facility. Uh, if, a, if the owner built a trucking facility and then wanted to put in a training center as an accessory use, he would have been able to do that without coming to the committee. But because the training facility is actually gonna be a um, or a primary use, that's the only reason why he is here to, uh, to ask for this to be a primary use. Uh, next slide. 
And that's it. So if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to ask me. Great. Thanks very much, Tim. So at this point, I'd like to call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Good evening. This is uh, Dinesh. Hello. Sekuja. Hi. Yes. Hi. Good evening, guys. And this is Dinesh Sekuja, and uh, is it 292 Dalton Avenue? Okay. And are you the, the applicant or the agent? I'm the applicant. Okay. And is there anything further you wish to add to the uh, presentation we've heard this evening? Definitely nothing there. The team okay. covers most of the part. Okay, Thanks. very very good. So I'll pull it over to the committee now and ask committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or for staff? And I'm seeing a silent committee, so I don't have any any questions. Okay, so I'll turn I'll open the public portion of the meeting now and ask for members of the public, are you interested in speaking to the application for 292 Dalton Avenue? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And again, do we have any members of the public with us this evening who wish to speak to the application for 292 Dalton Avenue? Please raise your virtual hand. I'm seeing none. And I'll ask one more time. Do we have any members of the public here to speak to the application for 292 Dalton Avenue? Please raise your virtual hand. And seeing none, I'll close the public portion of the meeting and I'll turn it back to the committee and ask for a motion. So moved by Paul and seconded by Greg. And any discussion? No, so all in favor, raise your hand. And that's unanimously carried. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, our next application is for number 8D, which is an application for permission on John Marks Avenue. Uh, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, this is an application for permission at 812 John Marks Avenue. The file number is D13010-2021. And the planner assigned to this application is Phil Prell. Good, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Good evening. Um, it's actually very fortuitous that I came after uh, uh, Mr. Fisher there because mine is also a permission, as you can clearly see, and he's already correctly summarized where that comes in the planning act. So hopefully we'll be able to go through this and save some time. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so in this case, this proposal, the applicant is proposing to operate independent exterior entrance and exit for permitted clinic use. However, this clinic uses are only permitted to have interior entrances. And this is, uh, and this clinic use is permitted in the area that the building would be operating in. Um, just to flag one other thing that Mr. Fisher said, just to really bring it home, um, is that an application for permission under the Planning Act uh, for 52, or 40, 45.2b has the two following tests that we need to satisfy here in order to approve this application. This would be a similarity between the uses, and the second would be whether the proposed use is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land. So now coming back to the presentation over here, um, the main thing we're gonna be talking about is this clinic definition. So I will read it in full here. So the clinic definition in the bylaw 72, 3274, apologies, under section 424 is a building or part of a building that is used solely by dent or physicians, dentists, and or drugless practitioners, their staff, and their patients for the purpose of consultation, diagnosis, office treatment, and without limiting the generality of the foregoing. The building may include administrative offices, waiting rooms, treatment rooms, laboratories, pharmacies, dispensaries that directly associate with the clinic. So our common understanding of what a clinic would be, but the key is the following over here in bold, provided that all such uses have access only from the interior of the building or structure, but shall not include accommodation for inpatient care, operating rooms for major surgery. So in this case, the applicant is proposing to have a separate entrance for their clinic, instead of having it be within one uh, clinic itself with multiple entrances to different practices inside. 
So approval of this application will permit an additional entrance and or, and or exit to be utilized by the clinic operating at 812 John Marks Avenue for a single medical practitioner's office to be accessed from the exterior entrance or exit. Next slide, please. Okay, so looking at the first on the left and then going into a circle here, this is the location of the property. Um, it's actually located in the new medical campus that's being built um, in this area here. Um, to the right, you can actually see it there, highlighted a little bit of blue at the bottom right of the second picture. That's where it will be. You can see the same at the bottom, which is an aerial view. And then looking at the last, which is to the uh, bottom left, that's actually what the building is going to look like in terms of its site plan. The red arrow denotes where the second entrance would be. The first entrance would be where those two accessible parking spaces are a little bit further south. Just for your knowledge as well, in this site, um, this building was known as Building B. So if Building B comes up, that does mean the subject property of 812 John Marks Avenue. Next slide, please. So this is the same image, image as the one we just saw, but focused in. The red arrow is where the proposed entrance would be, the independent entrance in this case. Um, the building is connected, as you can see, to the rest of the business park with internal walkways and roadways. It is kind of, as a medical campus would be, it is one entity in this kind of case with several uses that are similar and related all within. And the proposed entrance would not obstruct the operation of functional aspects of the property, including adjacent loading spaces, accessible parking areas, and adjacent buildings. Next slide. So as we can see here, this is a building rendering of where that entrance will be. The red arrow in the second image again denotes where that will be. Um, so the new entrance is anticipated to be within 10 meters of the main building entrance and 10 to 15 meters from both accessible parking spaces. The newly proposed entrance would open onto the internal walkway area of the site, like the entrances of the subject building and other adjacent clinic buildings. Excuse me. This permission is not anticipated to change the intensity of the use at the permitted clinic site as there's no additional uses being proposed. It is the same use, but with a different configuration. And it will not change the flows of traffic, change in function, or will not impact or inhibit neighboring buildings um, from functioning as intended. And as you can see at the bottom here, one of our major concerns here was that we don't wanna have people get confused as most people, in this case, in this area, one clinic entrance is the standard. So we did make a condition here that says for a clinic use with more than one entrance, where one entrance allows independent access from the exterior of the building for a clinic use, prior to applying for a building permit, the owner shall apply for and obtain a separate civic address, uh, but different unit number than that used for the other building entrance. So in this case, it will be clearly separate from the other building that is there, and there will be two different uh, unit numbers to clearly denote one is separate from the other. Next slide, please. So we've already gone over the definition of clinic here again. Before I summarize my points in the next slide, I just wanna focus in again at the bolded worded down there. So the bolded wording is the part that does trigger this permission. And so again, it's provided that all such uses have access only from the interior of the building or structure. Next slide, please. So this slide basically summarizes why we believe we do wanna support this permission to happen. So the BP2 zone requires that for the purpose of zoning, the entire BP2 zone shall be considered as one lot. Uh, a new entrance slash exit for one building within this medical campus appears to fit the intent of this policy as the entire medical campus is considered as one lot. Despite the campus not being a, not being a building or structure, it is a single entity in terms of its zoning considerations and its overall functionality as a single medical campus. The campus has its own internal walking network, parking and driving network with multiple other clinic uses in close proximity. These other clinic uses can be visited or seen while entering slash exiting the campus. And this is similar to entering slash leaving a normal medical practitioner's office that, has a that is a clinic with multiple practices on its way in and out of the building with its own interior access. Next slide, please. So we are recommending that this application uh, is, is approved because it is consistent with the general intent and purpose of both the City of Kingston official plan, zoning bylaw 703274, and the use complies with the general intent of the site-specific BP2 zone. And it is a permitted use in the official plan, and it is a permitted use, uh, in, and it is the permitted use for the entire St. Lawrence Medical Campus. Uh, and next slide. 
And that's it. We have our three typical um, conditions there. So limitation, no adverse impacts, building from requirements, and that civic address re um, requirement that I said earlier for you guys. Um, so with that in mind, if anyone has questions or comments, I'd be more than willing to, to address them. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much for that. So at this point, I'd like to call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Hi, Vaughn. It's uh, Alex Adams from the Boulevard Group. I'm the uh, agent for the applicant on this file. Um, nothing further to add from Phil's uh, presentation there. Just simply, it's just an exterior entrance to the, uh, to the pharmacy use as opposed to a shared entrance. That's simply Very good. Thank okay, you. thank you for that. All right, so I'll ask the committee members, do you have any questions for the uh, applicant's agent or for staff? And I'm, yes, Paul. Oh, we have one. It's, uh, could you hear me? Yes, hear you fine, yes. Right, just obviously this makes perfect sense, particularly in the, in the times that we're in with COVID, so I'm supporting this, thank you. Oh, good, thanks for that. Any other questions or, or from the uh, committee members? Okay, so I'll now open up the public portion of the meeting. Are any members of the public here to speak to the uh, application for um, A12 John Marks? And actually, I saw one from the panelists. Oh, the hand is gone. No? So are any members of the public here to speak to the application for 812 John Marks Avenue? Please raise your virtual hand. And I'll call one last and final time. If anybody is here this evening to speak to the application for 812 John Marks Avenue, please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And not seeing any, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and come back to the committee for a motion. So moved by Greg and seconded by Paul. Any discussion? No, so all in favor, raise your hand. And that is unanimously carried. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Okay, so our next application is number 8E, which is an application for minor variance and consent. Uh, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record for us, please? Who are you, Mr. Chair? 8E is an application for minor variance and consent at 1444 Spruill Street. File numbers are D10034-2020 and D13040-2020. And the planner assigned to this application is Jason Partridge. Great, thank you. So through you, Mr. Chair, um, good evening, everyone. Good evening. So this is a combined report, a minor variance and a consent at 144 Spruill Street. Next slide, please. So the purpose and effect of this uh, consent application is to sever off one lot. So the one lot would be 454.9 square meters and it would have lot furniture along Spruill Street. The retained portion will be uh, 646 uh, square metered lot with uh, lot frontage along Spruill and Westbrook Road. The retained parcel of land will have a, an existing single family dwelling and an attached rear deck on the property as well. So next slide, please. So the purpose of the minor variance is to permit the, ex the consent application for minimum lot area, rear yard setback from main structure and minimum front yard setbacks for decks and steps in an R1 zone zoning by 7626. The variance is requested in order to sever the uh, smaller portion of the property. So it's the consent on the right. It will, will bring up the plot plan in a bit. Um, and also the new single family dwelling will have a front yard, two story uh, staircase to the front door and a second floor deck, deck balcony in the front yard. Um, also the minor variance will also permit the current location of the existing single family dwelling and the attached deck within the rear yard of the property. Um, the two pro proposed application is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw and represents appropriate and desirable development on, for the two lots. Next slide, please. So there's four variances that are being applied for. 
One is lot area, so they only need to ask for 9.6 square meters from the minimum lot area for both lots. The other lot that has the existing single family dwelling is in the 600 square meters, so it's well over the minimum, and the lot frontage is. Uh, so setback from the rear, so this is for the new single family dwelling, it's to permit the second floor balcony deck and the staircases at the front. So going, moving back to the existing single family dwelling, um, it would need a setback from the rear lot line for the existing dwelling and the existing deck. So that's variances three and four. Next slide, please. So this property is located on the corner of Westbrook Road and Spruill Street. Um, it's in the Westbrook area. Um, so you can see uh, the existing single family on the left and the new proposed single family uh, on the hash mark there. Next slide, please. So here's a plot plan. So you can see the existing deck uh, and the existing single family dwelling. Um, the garage is attached now. Uh, that's another one I want to point out. And the exist so the proposed single family dwelling is on the right with the staircases and the setbacks located there. So next slide, please. So here's the elevation of the new single family dwelling. So you can see from the stair, there's the ground floor staircase and the second floor balcony. Um, and the only other variance is the lot area, which is 9.6 square meters they're asking for to permit this construction of this uh, elevation. Next slide, please. So the requested variances and consent applications maintains the intent and purposes of both the City of Kingston official plan and zoning bylaws 7626. The proposal is desirable for their appropriate development or use of the land, building, or structure, and requested variances are minor in nature. As such, the proposed application meets all four tests under the subsection 45.1 of the Planning Act, and the application is being recommended for approval subject to the proposed conditions. Approval of this application will allow for the construction of the new single family dwelling with a two story balcony and deck, and along with recognizing the existing single family dwelling and deck. And that's it. Great. Thanks very much, Jason. Thank you. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to call on the applicant or their agent to identify yourselves by name and address, please. Hi, uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, Mark Willitson. I am the applicant. Great, thank you. Are, do you. Is there anything further you wish to add to the application we have before us this evening? No, I think Jason uh, went over everything that needed to be said, so. Okay, now there were two additional pieces of correspondence that we received this evening. Have you received those? They were two letters from neighbors? Um. Yeah, I believe there was uh, something. Uh, I didn't receive it, but Jason told me there was. Uh, I think there was something to do with uh, <clears throat> just. I don't live in the, in the the existing house. It's a rental, and I think okay. someone was asking if if it was more than if there was an up and downstairs, and it's just one one house. So. One house, yeah. I think um, the, uh, I wonder, um, Lindsay, is it possible to get a copy? Uh, Mark, do you have access to email right now that we could get you a copy of the letter just to review? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. If it's, uh, if it's possible, Lindsay um, or Elizabeth to email that to Mark, I think that'd be handy. And then we could probably come back to, come back to that. So okay. Here you go, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna address some of these questions for the yeah. Oh, okay. So, would you, would you like, through you, Mr. Chair, would you like me to go over them? Well, no. I just wanted to know that he had access to that, and then we can come back to that in the public portion. But at this point, what I'll do is I'll turn it over to the committee members to see if they have any questions for the applicant at this time. So no questions from the com committee members, okay. So what I'll do is I'll open the public portion of the meeting right now and ask if there are any members of the public here to speak to the application for 1444 Spruill Street, please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. 
And are any members of the public here to speak to the application for 1444 Spruill Street? Raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And I'll call one last and final time. Is anybody here to speak to the application for 1444 Spruill Street? Please raise your virtual hand. Okay, so on that note, I'll close the public portion of the meeting and we'll pull it back to the um, applicant maybe to address or and the I'm sorry and the planner to address some of the issues that were raised by the members of the public uh, in the written letters. So, you, Mr. Chair, uh, I just uh, emailed Mark the correspondence. Um, Good. I, believe, okay. I believe the individual did sign up for the meeting. Um, okay. I'm just gonna scroll through here and see if the individual is. No, I do not see their name on the list. No. Right here. So I can go over uh, the questions that they asked. So they asked uh, three specific questions on the yeah. Um In terms of servicing, so for water and septic. So I've directly spoken to Utilities Kingston on this matter. So, and they have come back and informed me that the creation of a new single family dwelling will not have any negative effects on the neighboring properties for water capacity or sewage capacity. Um, also, when the individual connects to these uh, services, they have to provide an engineering report that they will not negatively affect any neighborhood pro neighborhood properties or affect any capacity. So that's part of the Utilities Kingston proposal or uh, permit uh, stage. They need to have an engineer sign off that this will not neg negatively affect any of the properties. Okay. Um, in terms of the number three question, um, traffic issues or anything uh and there was like uh, emergency services coming down the street so the proposal in the existing single family dwelling provides one parking spot and more so the pro proposed single family dwelling has a two-car garage plus the appropriate zoning bylaw uh measurement of a front yard parking spot uh six meters by 2.7 so they provide one parking spot plus additional parking inside the garage the existing i guess retained lot on the left so currently uh mm -hmm. addressed with 144 squirrel street they have a two-car garage um, and a very large driveway so they could in theory uh, provide more than the minimum one yard or one car for the single family dwelling. Also, uh, I've talked to Mark, the owner of the property, and I have no zoning concerns for the use of the property. Uh, if someone's renting it out or use it, or if the owner's living there, uh, it is a single family dwelling and there's no zoning issues in terms of that. Rental apartments, and also important to note in the Westbrook Meadows uh, area, secondary suites aren't permitted as of right now to just go to the building permit stage and get one. So it's one fan, one single family dwelling, one kitchen in each uh, single family dwelling. Okay, thanks for that. I think that what I inferred from the letters from the uh, neighbors was that the, um, that, you know, uh, from Mr. Willis, Will Adson not being on site and renting it out, um, the neighbors are actually a problem if I'm reading the letters correctly. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, the question is, uh, what's going to happen with this new property? Is it just going to double the existing the problem that's already there now. And I personally resonated with, or that resonated with me because right across the road from my house, I'm dealing with exactly the same thing, like nine cars in the parking lot and uh, cars parked on the street. And it's, it's, it, um, it I, I empathize with these people. So, you know, Mr. Um, Will Adzen, what, is there anything that you can do to, um, uh, yeah. you know, uh, as a I landlord to, um, uh, you know, make this, pay, pay, make this a little easier and better for your neighbors? Yeah. Um, I already talked to my tenants and, the thing is, two of them changed occupations, and they had two vehicles at the time, and I wasn't aware of that. And they and they were overparking their privilege rights, and uh, and they're they're addressing that now. And the the, the only the only they, there's enough cars for for everyone that lives in the house to to park in the driveway, and whoever else is parked in front of the house is uh, either visiting or or whatever and that's really out of my control but i've i've addressed what was maybe a problem 
like in a month, month and a half, two months ago. Mm-hmm. So there shouldn't be that issue anymore. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think it's, it's kind of sometimes a sobering wake up call when the neighbors, um, you know, reflect that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think it's important as a, as a landlord to, um, you know, take it seriously and, and move forward mm-hmm. in a positive fashion. So, yeah. so thanks for that. Okay. All right, welcome. Okay, good. So um, uh, are there any other questions of committee members for the applicant or the staff? Uh, so uh, Somnath? Yeah, this is a question more for the staff. Is there a sidewalk in that plan? So through you, Mr. Chair. So that uh, subdivision area does not have sidewalks as of right now. So the parking area goes, uh, meets the minimum. And if the city decides to put sidewalks in, there's a right away portion that they could do that before the road starts. However, there is no sidewalks there today. Okay. Any other questions from the uh, committee members for the applicant or staff? No? Okay, so I guess we'll uh, turn it over to the committee for a motion. Would somebody like to move approval of this? So moved by Somnath and seconded by Greg. Any discussion on this? So the only discussion I had, I, I've already made, is just about you know responsible ownership and uh, you know making sure that this uh, fits and is aligned well with the neighborhood. But any other discussion from any other member? Okay, so we'll call for the vote. All in favor, raise your hand. And that is unanimously carried. Thanks very much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is 8F, which is for 11 Gardner Street. Elizabeth, or I'm sorry, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair. Up next is an application for permission, file number D13002-2021 for 11 Gardner Street. The city planner on this application is Sarah Oldenberger. Thank you for that. Can you hear me okay? Yes, very well. Oh, wonderful. Um, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. My name is Sarah Oldenberger. I'm a planner at the city of Kingston. And um, this is for 11 Gardner Street and it is a permission application. Next slide, please. All right, the purpose and effect of this application is to expand the existing single family dwelling to include a second story addition replace the existing porch with a new enclosed mudroom and add a covered porch and a new set of stairs on the north elevation of the proposed mudroom, which lead to the driveway. So the existing driveway. Um, the approximate amount of space that's gonna be added to the house. So the total floor area that's gonna be added is approximately 88.78 square meters. And while the existing dwelling has non-complying status, the existing use requires permission to expand the non-complying dwelling as the existing dwelling does not meet the current side yard, setback, front yard, lot width, and projections into front yards in zoning bylaw bylaw number 8499. All right, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so um, we've got the map here, which shows the subject property at 11 Gardner Street. So as you can see, it's on uh, the east side of Gardner Street in between Union and King Street West, and it's just across from Aberdeen Park. All right, next slide, please. So this, this is the site plan provided from by the applicant. And um, the text might be a little small, but as you can see, um, the second story addition will not be expanding the footprint of the current building. Um, so it'll have the same floor space as the main floor. And uh, the new mudroom is going to be, or is proposed to be where the existing mudroom is on the front of the dwelling. And um, and currently right now, there's a set of stairs that project from the um, front of the building going towards Gardner Street, but they're going to remove those and uh, put a covered porch on the north side. So on the bottom in this picture of the existing or the proposed mudroom and then have a set of stairs going from there as well, which will be easier to see on the next slide um, in the elevation. So can we go there now? All right, so in the top left, you can see um, a better 
configuration of that or what it's going to look like. So you can see there's the second story there as well as the mudroom with the covered porch and uh, proposed stairs as well. All right, next slide, please. All right, so we've got some floor plans as well uh, provided by the applicant, which are great. Um, so you can see here, this is the main floor as well as the um, uh, proposed mudroom, the proposed covered porch and the stairs that'll be leading to the driveway. And um, as you can see, this, uh, these proposed changes will increase the functional living space of the area, as I mentioned before, by approximately 88.78 square meters. All right, next slide, please. And this shows the uh, second floor. Um, so just for your reference, uh, this is the proposed area. All right, next slide, please. All right, so our recommendation here, uh, the request of permission maintains the general intent and purpose of both the City of Kingston official plan and zoning bylaw number 8499. The use, lot coverage, and height of the accessory structure is in key, or sorry, the height of the, um, that should read primary structure, is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw and represents appropriate and desirable development on the lot and will be functional for the continued residential use. As such, the application is being recommended for approval subject to the proposed conditions. Approval of this application will allow for the second story addition, a new enclosed mudroom, which would replace the existing porch, and a new covered porch and set of stairs on the north elevation of the proposed mudroom, which lead to the driveway. Um, and um, I also want to mention there's been no complaint so far with this property, and I believe the um, owner and applicant, Wesley Brooks, is here tonight as well. Um, I also want to highlight, um, as mentioned before, um, it meets the permitted the permission test in subsection 45.2 um, of the Planning Act. So that's why we're suggesting that it be approved tonight. Good. Thanks very much. And good catch on the recommendation. Yeah, sorry about that. No problem. Uh, so at this point, can I please call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please? please. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Yes. Uh, Wesley and Kristen Brooks, um, and our, our place of residence is 1283 Kings, uh, Princess Street. Okay. Is there anything further you wish to add to the application we have before us today? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. I think Sarah did a pretty good job uh, covering okay. everything. Great. Okay. Thanks for that. So at this point, I'll turn it over to the committee and I'll ask the committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or for staff? Please raise your hand. <clears throat> and I'm not seeing any questions by committee. So I'll open up the public portion of the meeting. Are any members of the public here this evening to speak to the application for 11 Gardner Street? Please raise your virtual hand. Now I'm not seeing any attendees in the... Um, and the public okay. gallery, uh, well, I'll, I'll still call two more times. Are any, is there anybody here to speak to the application for 11 Gardner Street? Please raise your hand in Zoom. And the third and final time, do we have any members of the public here to speak to the application for 11 Gardner Street? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And I'm seeing none, so I'll pull it back to the committee for a motion. All right, so moved by Paul, seconded by Vincent. And any discussion on this? So all in favor, raise your hand. And that's unanimously carried. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Okay, so our next uh, item on the agenda is 8G, which is an application for minor variance, 226 to 228 King Street. Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, 8G is an application for minor variance, file number D13058-2020 for 226 228 King Street East. The planner on this file is also Sarah Oldenberger. Great. Thank you. All right. And uh, thank you and through you, Mr. Chair. Again, my name is Sarah Oldenberger and I'm a planner at the City of Kingston. Uh, this application is a minor variance application for 226 and 228 King Street East. All right, can I get the next slide, please? All right, so the purpose and effect of this application is to replace the existing shed with an approximately 7.2 7 meter by 6.8 meter 
garage in the rear yard of the subject property, which would be accessed through the driveway on the neighboring property, municipally known as 232 King Street East, over which the owner of the subject property has an easement in the form of a right of way registered on title. All right, next slide, please. All right, so the variance requested is from zoning bylaw number 8499, section 5.17 EII, maximum lot coverage. So the requirement for that um, is 15% of lot area, and the proposed is 16.5, which necessitates a variance of 1.5%. All right, next slide, please. So the key map here, uh, you can see the property, the subject property at 226 and 228 King Street East. Um, it's located mid block through um, facing King Street East and uh, in between Earl Street and William Street. And um, so the proposed garage would be in the backyard of the subject property. And uh, the access, as I mentioned before, would be provided through the neighbor's driveway um, over which uh, there's a right of way registered on title. And uh, just wanted to mention here as well that the subject property is designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act. And it's also located within Old Sydenham Conservation District under part five, part five of the Ontario Heritage Act. All right, next slide, please. All right, so here is the site plan um, and also landscaping plan provided by the applicant. And it shows the proposed changes. So um, as it, things are right now, we're on the left and what's being proposed um, is on the right. And um, as you can see, there's a shed on the uh, current drawing um, and there's an asphalt parking pad. Um, th those are both going to be removed. And I'd also like to mention that the shed is not of heritage value. Um, and then on the right, you can see there is a new garage being proposed as well as a driveway. Um, these proposed change, postpone, these, uh, sorry, excuse me, all the proposed changes, except for the size of the new garage meet the requirements um, so that's the only thing that's being requested tonight. All right, can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so these, uh, these are preliminary floor plans. Um, I'd also like to mention that the measurements are a little different. This is with the, um, the packaged uh, garage that is being used, but the applicant's actually going to be making it larger than this. So the actual measurements are 23 feet and six inches by 22. Um, so these are the, the drawings there. So you can see there's a, um, a side door, like a one you can walk through, and then there's the big front of the garage. Um, and both of those, uh, the side door would be facing the subject property, the interior, and uh, the large mouth would be facing the driveway there. All right, next slide, please. All right, and here's some elevations. Um, I'd like to mention that Heritage Kingston granted conditional approval of these plans and was satisfied with the designs. And uh, that was on January 12th, 2021. Uh, next slide, please. All right, the requested variance maintains the general intent and purpose of both the City of Kingston official plan and zoning bylaw number 8499. The proposal is desirable for the appropriate development or use of land, building or structure, and the requested variance is minor in nature. As such, the proposed application meets all four tests under subsection 451 of the Planning Act, and the application is being recommended for approval subject to the proposed conditions. So approval of this application will allow for the construction of an approximately 7.2 meter by 6.8 meter garage in the rear yard, which has a lot coverage of 16.5% of the subject property. Um, I'd also like to note there's been no complaints about this so far. Um, and uh, I believe the applicant, Brandon Potter from PC Constru Custom Construction is here tonight as well to speak to the application um, as well. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about this application. Great. Thanks very much, Sarah. So at this point, can I please call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record? Hello, my name is Brandon Potter, uh, pertaining to address 226 slash 228 King Street East. Good. And are you the, you're the um, agent? I am the agent. Okay, very good. Is there anything further you wanted to add to the application we have before us this evening? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Sarah did a very good job. Uh, uh, Great. What we, we had proposed. Great. Thanks very much. So committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or their agent? Paul, I see your hand is up. Uh, just to staff or, or the applicant, I was just wondering if there's any garages similar in size in that general area. Thank you. Thanks. Good question.
Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, uh, I had it muted for a second. Um, to my knowledge, uh, Dr. McGregor's um, house is one of the only uh, residences in that area without a garage. Without a garage. Okay, thank you. Okay. Great, that's a good question. All right, committee members, any other questions for the applicant or the staff? I'm seeing none. So I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Do we have any members of the public here with us this evening to speak to the application for 226, 228 King Street East? Please raise your hand, virtual hand in Zoom. Is anybody here to speak to the application for 226, 228 King Street East? Please raise your virtual hand. And third and final call, do we have anybody here this evening to speak to the application for 226 to 228 King Street East? Please raise your virtual hand. And I'm seeing none, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting and come back to the committee for a motion. So moved by Paul and seconded by Somnath. Any discussion? None, so all in favor, raise your hand. Physical hand, that's, a, that's a unanimously carried. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, the next application we have is 8H, which is for 809 Development Drive. Uh, Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, this is an application for minor variance, file number D13-066-2020 at 809 Development Drive. I am the planner on this file, so I will move into the presentation. Okay, very good. All right, so the purpose and effect of this application is to reduce the minimum drive aisle width and to reduce the combined dimension of the drive aisle and parking space length in order to accommodate 30 parking spaces for the stacked townhouse development at 809 Development Drive. Next slide, please. Here is the key map and the neighborhood context map from the report exhibits for reference. Next slide, please. The first variance is to reduce the minimum parking aisle width from 6.5 meters to six meters. The second variance is to the minimum combined length of two parking spaces plus the drive aisle this variance is to acknowledge the reduction in drive aisle from variance one and also the previous zoning bylaw amendment that reduced the parking space length from six meters to 5.2 meters. Um, without these variances, the property can only accommodate 21 parking spaces. Um, next slide, please. So here is the site plan for this proposal. Um, what I've done is shown the drive aisle width um, in the, with the yellow line and the green line shows the proposed um, combined parking space length and drive aisle width um, of 16.4 meters, just so you can get an idea of what these two variances are measuring. And while we're looking at this site plan, I'll just note that parking space number 29, that was the space that was located in the bottom right-hand corner of the plan, has been removed by the applicant based on recommendations of the parking study that was completed. So what's shown there in the hashed area is a no parking zone. Next slide, please. This is just a summary of the public notice and consultation. Uh, a letter was mailed, signage was posted, and an ad was placed in the newspaper. We have not received any public comments on this application. Next slide, please. So I've included a summary of the recent applications for um, this property on the slide here for you. Um, this development was brought to the Committee of Adjustment twice in 2020, so it may seem familiar to you. Yeah. In June 2020, there was an application for consent regarding access and um, stormwater easements that was bumped up to the committee. 
And again, in November 2020, we saw a minor variance application. That one was D13030-2020. That was the application for variances to the height of a front porch and the length of accessible parking spaces. Um, both of these applications were approved by the committee. The two variances in this current minor variance application were identified after the approval of the November minor variance, which is why they were not included in, this, in that application. I'll also note that there's an active site plan application file for the townhouse development, and that's in the final stages currently. Next slide, please. This application is being recommended for approval. I'll leave this in your hands, Mr. Chair. Great, thanks very much. And at this point, can I call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address, please? Yep. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Tao. I'm a planner with IBI Group. And address is 650 Dalton Avenue. Good, anything further you wanna to add to the application we have before us? Uh, nothing of content, just thanks to staff for their work on uh, this file as we've been through a couple of uh, a couple of uh, rounds of dealing with this and including having to go back to council for the provision for an application. So thanks to right. staff for work on that. Very, very good. Okay, so committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or staff? Please. So Paul, you have a question? Sure, this is uh, to Lindsay, if I may. Uh, she put up a... a slide a few minutes ago with a yellow and a green sort of highlighted area. And that was very helpful, but actually it confused me a little as well. I'm just wondering if it's possible to put that back up. And I was trying to understand is the yellow uh, highlighting variance one and the green highlighting variance two? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the yellow is highlighting variance one. So that's the width of the drive aisle. Okay. Um, it's being proposed, the proposed variance is from 6.5 meters to six meters. And the green is um, highlighting variance two. Um, that's a provision in the zone, zoning bylaw that measures um, basically the length of one parking space plus the length of the drive aisle plus the length of the other parking space on the other side. So, so thank you for that. that. That helps clarify things. I was a little confused when I first saw it. So thank you so much. Good, thanks. Uh, any other committee members have questions for the applicant or staff? I see none. So I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Do we have any members of the public with us this evening to speak to the application for 809 Development Drive? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And is anybody here this evening to speak to the application for 809 Development Drive? Please raise your virtual hand. And third and final call, is anybody here to speak to the application for 809 Development Drive? Please raise your virtual hand. I see none, so I'll come back to the committee uh, for a motion. So moved by Paul, seconded by Jordan. Any discussion? So all in favor, raise your hand. And that's uh, five, uh, that's unanimously carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so our next item on the agenda is 8I, which is 867 Woodbine Road. Lindsay, can I have you read this into the record, please? Through you, Mr. Chair, 8I is an application for minor variance for 867 Woodbine Road, file number D13008-2021. I am also the planner for this application. Okay. Okay. So the purpose of this application is to reduce the minimum required side yard width for the construction of an attached garage. Next slide, please. Um, again, I have included the key map and the neighborhood context map from the report for reference. Next slide, please. The applicant is requesting a variance to section 12 of the zoning bylaw 
to reduce the minimum required side yard width from four feet to two feet. Next slide, please. So here's the site plan and the floor plan for the proposed garage. The uh, heavy gray line indicates the walls of the existing house on the drawing on the right hand side of the screen. And the highlighted yellow areas are subject to the minor variance. It's the setback from the garage walls to the lot line. The existing house is approximately 13 feet, seven inches from the Western property line. And the proposed garage is 11 feet, seven inches wide. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide just has the elevation renderings of the proposed garage. Next slide, please. Uh, a letter was mailed, signage was posted, and a courtesy ad was placed in the newspaper. We have not received any public comments in regards to this application. Next slide, please. The application is being recommended for approval, and I leave this in your hands, Mr. Chair. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Bach. I'm the owner at uh, 867 Woodbine Road, uh, and I'm the applicant. Great. And is there, is there anything further you wish to add to the application we have before us? No, there's nothing to add at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So committee members, do you have any questions for either the applicant or staff? And I'm seeing none, so I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Are there any members of the public here uh, that wish to speak to the application for 867 Woodbine Road? Please raise your virtual hand. And as I'm looking at the remaining people who are in the meeting, I don't think we have any other members of the public. So I'll just ask one more time. Is anybody here to speak to the application for 867 Woodbine Road? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. And I'm not seeing anybody, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting and come back to the committee for a motion. So moved by Somnath and seconded by Greg. Any discussion? So all in favor, raise your hand. And that is unanimously carried. Thank you. Thank you. And our Final application this evening is number 8J, which is an application for minor variance. Lindsay, can I have you read that into the record? Through you, Mr. Chair, our last application tonight is a minor variance application for 1093 Midland Avenue, file number D13007-2021. I will be giving the presentation for this application as well. Okay, thanks. The purpose of this application is to reduce the minimum setback for a drive-through, to reduce the required number of parking spaces, um, to uh, reduce the front yard setback, and to increase the maximum gross floor area in order to further develop the existing shopping center site by adding three new buildings. Next slide, please. Uh, once again, I've included the key map and the neighborhood context map. This property fronts on to Midland Avenue um, and has commercial uses to the north and the south. The west side of the property abuts residential uses. Next slide, please. So here are the four variances requested. The variance one is for a setback for a drive-through. The zoning bylaw requires a setback of 50 meters from a drive-through to a zone that permits a residential use. This property is in the C2 zone, which permits a residential use as an accessory use. Therefore, the setback reduction actually applies to this lot. The proposed drive-through is more than 50 meters away from the existing residential uses to the west, however. Uh, it's approximately 75 to 80 meters away from the nearest house. 
Uh, variance two is to reduce the minimum parking space requirement. The bylaw requires 5.4 spaces per 100 square meters of floor area. This would result in 189 required parking spaces. The applicant has requested a reduced ratio of 4.5 spaces per 100 square meters. Um, what this works out to is 158 parking spaces. Um, this number is supported by the parking study that was submitted by the applicant. However, the applicant is actually showing 174 spaces on the site plan at this time. They have requested the lower number identified by the parking study um, for the variance to allow for flexibility in the future if needed. Variance three is to reduce the minimum front yard setback from Midland Avenue for an automobile service station. Um, this is from 50 feet to 18 feet. This applies only to the proposed oil change facility on the lot. And the last variance is to increase the maximum gross leasable floor area on the site from 2,000 square meters to 3,510 square meters. Next slide, please. So here's the site plan for the proposal. Um, the drive-through variance is the one shown in green. Um, basically, I've just highlighted the drive-through aisle um, in, on the plan. And the front yard setback for the oil change facility is the one shown in yellow. The other two variances apply site-wide, so they are not highlighted on this plan. Next slide, please. Um, letter was mailed, signage was posted, and courtesy ad was placed in the newspaper. Next slide, please. The application is being recommended for approval. And again, I leave this in your hands, Mr. Chair. Great, thanks very much, Lindsay. Uh, right, so I'll call on the applicant or their agent to identify themselves by name and address for the record, please. Hello. Hello. Can you hear us? Sorry. Yes, very much. Yeah, very well. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Claudio Belvino from the Avar Research Group. We're market analysts and land use planners uh, regarding the uh, 1093 Midland Avenue. So, Great. Is there anything further you wanted to add to the application uh, this evening? Uh, very brief, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, as I said, we represent uh, Troy Voyers, Inc., the registered owners of 1093 Midland Avenue. Also joining us uh, uh, via Zoom is Charles Dyer, the owner of the property, uh, Joe Wajid, the designer, and Vanessa Skelton, the uh, traffic engineer. As the committee is aware, there's an existing site plan control agreement on title dated uh, April 8th, 2016, which will need to be amended to regulate the proposed changes to the reconfiguration of the building and uh, parking on the site. The proposed changes to the site plan will only impact the front portion of the site, which measures approximately one third of the area closest to Midland Avenue. The back two thirds of the site backing onto residential uses will not change from the already approved site plan. Accordingly, the owners seeking relief for several minor variances to support the continued development of the shopping center to include the automobile oil change operation and expanded drive-through facility, a restaurant and a building containing retail commercial uses along the Northern property line. Given that staff, the staff report is very detailed and covered all the relevant material we have nothing further, further to add at this time. I'll just conclude that we have read the staff report and are in agreement uh, with the staff zoning assessment, along with the staff's findings that the requested variants are considered minor in nature and are desirable for the appropriate development and use of lands and building on or structure. Furthermore, the requested minor variants are consistent with the general intent and purpose of both the city of Kingston official plan and the zoning bylaw. We also agree with staff's recommendation for approval of the minor variances to include the four conditions outlined in Exhibit A of the staff report. And additionally, we agree with staff's report that the proposed application meets all the four tests under Section 45, Subsection 1 of the Planning Act. So thank you for your consideration, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. 
Great. Thanks very much for that. All right, committee members, do you have any questions for the applicant or their agent or staff? And uh, Paul. Sure, uh, Mr. Chair, this is probably to staff. It's concerning the first uh, variance, uh, variance number one, read the drive-through. Um, I thought I heard Lindsay mention that the drive-through is at a greater distance than 50 meters to the closest a residential housing that backs on that property. I just wanted to confirm that that is what I heard. And I really wasn't sure what the requirement is 50 meters from the closest part of a drive through to a zone that permits a residential use. So I'm assuming that this building permits a residential use and they're not using. I just wanted to confirm those two points. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, that is correct. Um, this um, proposed drive-through is much more than 50 meters away from the nearest residential property. Um, and the variance is based on what we might call a quirk to the current zoning bylaw. Um, the C2 zone, that's the zone that this property is in. It's also the zone both to the north and the south of this property. Um, the C2 zone permits a residential use as an accessory use. So um, that's what this variance is for, is to the C2 zones. Thank you. Great. Thanks for that. Committee members, do you have any other questions for uh, staff or the applicant or the agent? And I'm seeing none, so I'll open the public portion of the meeting. Are any members of the public here with us this evening to speak to the application for 1093 Midland Avenue? Please raise your hand in Zoom. And I'll just ask one other time. I think we're all staff and applicant here. Is, is there anybody here to speak to the application for 1093 Midland Avenue? Please raise your virtual hand in Zoom. I'm seeing none, so I'll close the public portion of the meeting and come back to the committee for a motion. So moved by Vincent, seconded by Jordan. Any discussion? So all in favor, raise your hand. And that would be unanimously carried. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay, so I guess that concludes our uh, meeting for this evening. So um, there are no other motions or notices of motions. We don't have any other pieces of business. Uh, committee members, was there anything you wanted to bring up under other business? None. Okay, so there's no correspondence. The date of the next meeting is May 17th, the Monday, May 17th. And I guess now we're looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved by Somnath and seconded by Greg. And all in favor, raise your hands. That's unanimously carried at 6.58 p.m. Thanks very much and see you all next month. Thanks, everyone. Later.